So NVIDIA finally launched the new RTX 50 series at CES 2025. I have some opinions on it. I wanted to wait a few days before making the video just to really kind of digest everything that went on there. I think the prices on the surface are definitely better than we expected. First, let's talk about all of the models that were introduced and their pricing. Now, obviously, 5090, let's start right there, 1999. This is better than some of the rumors, to be honest. Some of the rumors were like, it's gonna be a $2,600 GPU. I thought it was gonna land somewhere between um, 1599 and 1999. If you watched a few videos ago, 1999 was something that seemed reasonable considering the specs of this GPU. Now, forget NVIDIA's claims for a second that it's like, you know, twice as fast as the 4090. I'm sure with DLSS 4 and things like that, it certainly will be in some cases. Uh, 32 gigabytes of VRAM, uh, you know, G7. Um, I'm going to call it G7 instead of GDDR7 because I heard Jensen say G7, and that's a lot easier to say. So that, you know, G7 is more efficient. Uh, it's generally faster. Uh, tons of bandwidth on this GPU. You know, really high memory um, bus. So that's all very, very impressive. Those weren't complaints with a 4090, by the way. Nobody was like 24 gigabytes of VRAM is, you know, uh, too tight. It's the opposite. Most people can't even reach 24 gigabytes of VRAM in gaming. I know some of you, if you play some, you know, some simulator games and certain, you know, VR, you can definitely get it up there. But anyway, 24 gigabytes is sufficient and 32 gigabytes shows us that this GPU is really a monster that straddles both worlds of gaming, content creation, you know, machine learning, uh, whatever you want to call it, whatever other fields aside from gaming that it can be used for, which are, you know, a plentiful. So it's basically a Titan GPU. And now let's hear a word from our sponsor, VIP-CDKDeals.com, a Windows Pro CD key. Add to cart, you put in code CC20. This will also work on Windows 11. You want to go into your settings in Windows, change and adjust your CD key, click activate. And now let's go back to the video. So and plus all of the other specs are pretty insane and you know many CUDA cores it's extremely powerful 575 watts which is pretty shocking because that just seems like a lot of watts um, and what's even more shocking is that the founders edition is like a two slot gpu very impressive actually for something that powerful to be that small you would think the jokes would be that it's like as big as a house or like an air conditioner right so that's some very impressive engineering there so overall, 1999 actually seems fair for what that GPU is. I mean, forget the fact that NVIDIA bumped the price of the 90 series. When the 3090 came out, it was already expensive. So we way passed that threshold a long time ago. Let's compare it to the 4090's price. I think it's impressive because it's a really, really powerful GPU. And I think it probably warrants that price. And remember, we may not even see it for $19.99 in terms of like the street price because you're going to have the AIB partners that are usually more expensive. Like I'm sure you'll have an Asus Strix for like almost $3,000 or $2,500 or whatever it may be. So that price is still going to be high. But I think for what the GPU is, it's interesting. I consider it fair for now. Let's see the reviews. We haven't seen the numbers yet at least judging from the specs and from what the GPU produces, it looks to be fair for the amount of power. It's the best GPU ever, basically, for gaming. Um, so now, what about the, uh, the 5080? The 5080 is interesting because it's like half of the 5090, almost in every sense. First, the price is half, $999. That's eh, half of 2000 is $1,000. There we go. And then all of the specs are pretty much half as well. 16 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 32. Um, everything seems to be just, you know, a, a big step down, actually. There's a big gap in between a 5080 and a 5090. I mean, that gives you plenty of room for a 5080 Ti, for example, right in the middle at like $1,500 or $1,600. Definitely does. Maybe 24 gigabytes of VRAM or something. Maybe that can take the place of the 4090. That's a pretty wide gap. I haven't really heard people talk about this huge gap. Um, that can be another GPU, maybe another two GPUs, three GPUs. You can fit a lot of stuff in between a 5080 and a 5090. Considering the performance difference, 
you can definitely fit a decent amount um, in terms of having different VRAM and things of that nature. $999, a little surprising that Nvidia actually kept the price of the 4080 Super. So I think that's good news. So that pricing seems fair um, for the performance uptick we're about to get with this GPU. As we go down the line, the 5070 Ti, $749, $50 cheaper than the current 4070 Ti Super. And it maintains the same gigabytes of VRAM, but of course, you know, the G7, GDR7. So very, very interesting. The price went down. Now, I consider it fair considering the type of performance we're going to get. So far, at least from the surface, it seems like NVIDIA's pricing is, you know, right down the middle. It seems fair. They dropped the price on some GPUs. Things didn't go up um, aside from the, the 5090 that went up around 25%, which may be justifiable given the specs. I'm just saying. But then the other GPUs actually went down in price and obviously the 5080 stayed the same. So that's not bad. That's better than Nvidia has done in the past by like really raising prices. And then we get to the 5070, which 549, $50 cheaper than the 4070 Super. I mean, that sounds also pretty fair, to be honest. You know, I'm always hard on NVIDIA pricing, but at this point, looking at at least some of the initial specs, and remember, most of the graphs NVIDIA shares, it's all based on AI and DLSS4, so we haven't seen the full breadth of what the GPUs can do, the full scope. In a lot of cases, in raster performance, it may not be as impressive, but I'm still thinking it's going to be fairly impressive. Obviously, you only get 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the 5070, but you know, NVIDIA's claim that the 5070 is as fast as a 4090. I mean, a lot of people are going to roll their eyes at that because obviously, and then Jensen also said that, you know, it wouldn't be possible without AI. So he's talking about DLSS4 and that new, the multi-frame generation. And though in those cases with those new technologies, I'm sure that's probably true in a lot of cases, especially considering that the 5070 has upgraded uh, tensor cores and has, you know, upgraded RT cores, you know, for ray tracing. So it's a going to be a pretty impressive GPU, but as fast as a 4090, it's, you know, very hard to justify that statement as a whole because the 4090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, much higher, you know, memory bandwidth. Um, in other scenarios, the 4090 will certainly crush the 5070. Maybe in games that support DLSS 4 with like multi-frame generation, I can see that being true. But in terms of just like outright power, the 4090 is obviously still going to be overall a more powerful GPU. If you cherry pick the 5070 and DLSS, obviously I'm sure it's going to be very, very fast. And I'm sure there's some validity to that claim in some cases. But I don't really think NVIDIA needs to do that. They don't have to make these outrageous cherry picked claims because they have virtually no competition aside from the little bit that AMD is thrown into the mix, which we haven't really seen much of aside from the 9070 XT, which we barely know any specs. So basically, you can tell that NVIDIA is competing against itself by comparing it to its own GPUs. So... We're going to see what happens with the actual reviews and the numbers to see if all these prices seem justifiable. I mean, it's possible the performance isn't that much more impressive and then the prices would be not as good. But at least from some of the claims and some of the initial um, charts provided by NVIDIA with some of the new technologies that are in these GPUs, um, it looks like the pricing is at least fair. It's cheaper in most cases, the same in the case of the 5080, and probably justifiably okay in that 5090, um, just because the specs seem insane for what that GPU is. Uh, you know, a lot of people thought it was going to be more than that, so... We'll see what happens. We'll see if these GPUs pan out. I want to know what you think down below. Let me know what you think of the pricing, if you're going to get one. And I'll see you guys on the next video.